testing. One, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How just going to do that for like a newborn baby to the world? Hello to the zero people that are watching me <laughs> at this time or to the thousands in the future who will be watching me. Um, today, I'm back on my Hangouts. So I hope everybody's doing great. And I really want to talk about why, why is everybody, the world, it seems, so angry about everything? Um, that's really what I want to talk about. And hopefully I can get some people to join in with me on this. Um, first, let me give a disclaimer. I never want people not to ever in, in be angry. I'm, well, really, I want you to be happy as hell. I never want you to be angry. But however, whichever sounds better, I don't know, conjecture or whatever. Um, I think a lot of people are angry about so much stuff that it, it's mind boggling to me. People are angry about the way people dress. You're angry about the way people talk. You're angry about the way they look. Um, you know, it just, just destroys your whole day. They shouldn't exist. Why do you exist, you, you short person, you? <laughs> you know, you awkward walking guy. Why don't you walk in rhythm? You know, oh, man, I just think that, yeah, what's up, brother? I just think that... Uh, so many people let their anger and their 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 hate um, put them on a path that is not constructive or, or positive. And that's something that has always blown my mind. I would love to hear anybody who wants to hop on and chit chat. We can talk about it. Explain to me why you're you're angry. What makes you so bitter or hurt because you know me i'm a loving guy i don't want people to be angry at all i want you to feel great so give me one second yeah i just got sidetracked um yeah you know what i was listening to uh they had lebron james uh talking really i, I watched a little bit on marcus um browns uh, yeah <laughs> marcus a brown uh i will say the name right i was watching on his channel and um they were uh i think it's don lemon that's his name um he was like well would you talk to donald trump and he was like i wouldn't even sit across from him and i'm thinking man that's hate. Like, like I'm not. I think LeBron is a positive brother. I have another negative really to say, but I can sit and talk to anyone because if we can't ever talk and have a discussion, how can we ever solve anything? Even your enemy, you should be able to have a dialogue with them. Your hate shouldn't be so great. Your anger, the way you feel about people, shouldn't be so monumental that you can't um, interact with people. And I think that once you start you stop dialogue uh you can really uh, that's how wars happen because people just don't want to talk anymore they decide to fight with weapons and eradicate life and i think life is the most precious thing and i'm not saying you won't ever be in situations where you're going to have to take some of those life that's going to happen sometimes to protect people or to save someone it, it's going to happen but a lot of wars could be avoided if people could dialogue and get past their hate and anger so that's what this discussion is today about that's what the dialogue is about um I, you know People know me. Um, I can get real silly, and uh, I can't hear people. Is my, can, can, hold on. If somebody's talking, you gotta get. What's me going on? on? I hear you. I can hear you now. There you go. Just testing. Just testing. All right, brother. I hope everything is going on great with you. It's a pleasure to have you on. And you know, this is uh, you. You feel free to speak when you want, man. This is your channel, just like it's mine. So, you know, I, I see you. You can get heated, brother. So explain your situation to me. Tell me why you think people uh, are whatever. It's whatever you want to talk about. Just, you got the floor. Well, well I, 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 I hear myself, I hear myself double. double. Okay, sure. Not on me. No, I'm good now. All right. Yeah. So basically, what it is is that the anger comes from people not being involved and in seeing the truth. What happens is, when you're a child, you come in this world, you come happy. Okay. Then you get to a certain point, you start seeing the reality because whatever you was taught was a lie. 
People are starting to see the true history of what happened in this country and throughout the world. And the reason for the wars is because people are not honest about the reality of this place. This place was set up for us to learn whoever we was. This was not a place to be a resting place. Nobody's resting. Who's resting? Nobody. The whole world is, is not resting. Because you have people that's in charge that mm -hmm. is, excuse me, guys, hold on one second. Pardon me about that text message. I got to tell the person in a minute that I'm on a um, Google Hangout. Every time I do a Google Hangout with somebody, I'll do a live stream, all these text messages coming in. So anyway, what happens is when you start to get to a certain age and you start seeing the world for what it is, and then you see what's on TV, which is a bunch of lies, that mind starts to hate. You start to hate the things that you love. And you 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 willing to go to war for it instead of just saying, you know what? All this stuff is fake, man. If this is not real. Because if it was real, we would have kumbaya, we could all sing and enjoy. But this is not the time for it, Charles. It's too many, it's too many people that it's not of people that's ruling this world and they they love to see us go at it they love to see us hate each other because they don't have it's a lot of insecurity man it's a lot of men and women are very insecure i see this all the time a lot of people are insecure about themselves that's why they do the things they do they harm themselves because they're so insecure we are the most insecure nation in the history of civilization think about it you have more money collectively than all countries combined, and you still want to mess with them. So they, you don't think they don't have the reason to attack? Ask that question, Charles. Um, okay, since you, you're, you, I think that anybody who feels oppressed usually wants to go against their oppressor, whatever they believe it to be. So I can't, uh, it's hard for me to say what other people should do. But I do feel that if I feel oppressed and I can get free or I can retaliate, I would. So I'm, I understand that situation. Um, however, um, not disputing anything that you said, because I don't disagree with what you're saying. However, I do think that people um, are just, they don't, how do I say it? Because you, you made a good point. I think sometimes people let the media or they let um, what they, like what you've been taught confuse you. And sometimes people have been taught wrong. That's what I can say. So sometimes you look at somebody who's trying to help you, but through some type of programming, um, you start to see them, their existence as, as, as a detriment to your survival. And that's something that as intelligent beings, we should be able to transcend. Hello, Neon Eyes. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, so that's what I believe. I hope I answered your question. I think that anybody who feels oppressed sooner or later when they have a chance will go against the oppressor. And that's why if they think America is, or the United States is their oppressor, they will try to fight against it. Did I answer the question? Let me give you, let me give you another one. Let's say you get in a relationship with somebody. Y'all been happy for a long time. Yet you find out that that person is really not happy when you start to build. They want to oppress you of your success. That's the problem with a lot of our people, when you start getting into a big situation, they they knick knack any little thing that you did wrong, not looking at the big picture. So that's why a lot of successful people don't wanna help the people that they roll with in the near future because they don't see what you see. Okay, I understand they that. that. They don't know what Charles been through where he got to get where he went through. We don't yeah. know, only you know that. Only I yeah. know what I've been through to get to where I get to. Yeah. You know, who, 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 who's, to say, who's to say that nobody knows Charles then they had no food for a month. There's been brothers that didn't have food for two months, three months that I know yeah. personally. Yeah. And then they're successful. Everybody looking at the success, they don't know how they got to get to that point. Yeah, and I agree with that. A lot of people are not willing to put in the work. So their insecurities is killing them. It's not helping them. And so they use their insecurity. They allow TV to tell them what to do. That's yeah. why I don't have TV. I don't need TV. I understand. I mean, I understand your, your points. Um, however, you got to understand people. Um, well, 
I mean, you, I don't really think that people, um, people just want to live in the now. A lot of people do. And um, they're not worried about what you had to do to get to where you're at. They just see where you're at and either they're for you or they're against you. And a lot of people want to control the environment. I know I can't control anybody except me. So I can't be angry about somebody's success or um, I try not to, I try to be in the middle. I try not to, I mean, I, I get upset, but I control it and I don't let what I can't control bother me because my existence, this is my philosophy, just existing and just my ability to be able to interact with you, with neon eyes, uh, with Lisa, anybody who uh, stops by and says anything to me is, is special. So that's why I don't get angry. However, I'm not saying I don't get angry ever. I just don't let it hold on. But um, I just wonder, like you say, insecurity is the driving force for a lot of people's anger. Is that what you believe? That's a question to you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if women were honest about their insecurities and men were honest about their insecurities, their, yeah, okay. all that pressure, all that pressure will be released. Okay. Um, this, this, is, this is why I see. This is why, this is why it's a lot of war between men and women. I'm going to explain why. Sexual deportation is at an all-time high between the man and the woman in this country. We have separated so far, we can't even look at each other in the eye because they consider that harassment. So when you got people following a Me Too movement, following things that's destroying them, you know what that means. It's going to be war. This is what they want. The powers that be, whatever you want to call them, these people call them. I don't even let them bother me. But you have a lot of people let them affect their lives. Let's be real, Charles. I understand. I mean, I, I, for me, um, I, I always want a connection between all people. So whatever, whatever you come from, however you are, um, as long as you come with me in friendship and love, I'm going to come at you with friendship and love. And I think that's the problem. Um, if we're going to speak about men and women for a second, is that you don't have a lot of people that really want to communicate openly and, and instead of just disagreeing, they disapprove. And I try my best to um, always hear what you got to say. I try not to really uh, be a dominant force when it comes to conversation. Even though I'm opinionated and I have a lot to say, um, I would rather listen. So i rather ask questions so I can learn from you. So I'm just, I'm enjoying you asking me questions. So now I got a chance to come back at you. But uh, I, I I just, I think that people have a right to, to either, uh, if you're, let's say we, we talk about the term race, which I don't like to use, but it's, it's a term we all use, or ethnic group or ethnicity. We, it, it's, some, it's all synonymous to me, but somebody may say it's different. But um, if you choose to stick with your group, I'm all for that. If you choose to go outside your group, I'm all for that. Why would I hate you for your choices? As long as you're not causing um, pain or physical pain to me or pressing my ability to survive, then I don't care what you do. And uh, it's, it's, it's so many people that are angry about other people's choices. And I agree with when you say it's insecurity, but um, I, I, I just want to understand it better. So hey, it's Neon eyes. I want you to feel free to speak whenever you want, because you know this is open. So anytime you want to jump in and say something, feel free, because I love to hear you speak. You, and okay. you're, so, you know, don't don't can feel limited. Me? I can hear you. Okay. Um. Well, I was just gonna say, like, I think it's easier for people to be at war, because, like, I think nowadays people have been so desensitized, and it's it's just more convenient because they're heartless anyway. So no one really wants to sit down and have a conversation and and work through their thoughts and, and navigate through them because it's easier to be heartless you know it takes work to actually sit down and listen to someone and connect and see what's wrong or to like understand someone i don't think anyone wants to do that anymore because we're so busy being at war with each other so it's just easier to be heartless i don't know i agree with that um i agree she's right me that's my biggest thing is man um i really want to understand other people and once I understand you, I can really love you. So even if I disagree, even if I don't like what you've done, I still want to understand where you come from so I can have some type of empathy for you. Because, you know, I, I want to have uh, empathy for people. I want to sympathize for you. I want to at least understand where you come from. And even I think, even if I think it's horrible, I, I just want to be able to say, okay, I understand why you did it. I don't agree, but I understand. And yeah. I can forgive, you know, but most people, they want to just not forgive people. And that's causes dissension that causes us to not be able to interact and it causes us not to work together and if we go going by what my brother seven is saying um we'll never uh be on the level of the 
people who do work together, which we call the group in power. If you can say that, does that sound? Um, yeah, yeah, because because I sit I sit in the tables with them of the contract I'm getting into now later on today. I have to sit with them. I have to speak with them on certain things, and I know they're going to test me different ways. And if you make one mistake, they don't believe in second chances. That's just who they are. You okay. know, you are you're aware of that, Charles. You know, being in L.A., being mm -hmm. around Hollywood people. They'll tell you behind the closed doors. That's what they that's what they tell you. Any little mistake, they're gonna let you know about it and they're gonna put it on mainstream and they're gonna, you know, twist the story. This is why I want to tell the people when you watch TV, a lot of the things they say, 75% of it is lies, 25% of it, of it is truth. Yeah. That's I, I, why it's called tell lie vision. That's why it's called tell lie vision. They tell a lie. And they give you a vision of what they perceive to be right might not be right for that person. It might be right for some people, but it's not going to be right for everybody. That's where the confusion come in. So yeah. once you learn how to get over that and know what the lie is and see what the vision, you're going to pick up on the things. That's why I said in my last hangout before I come back September 1st, that pedophilia will pass this for. They putting out things that they showing it and nobody is picking up on it. I don't even watch TV and I already know that because see it on the billboards. They letting you know through their own television what their vision of what they people want the people to be. And they are exactly for and people are fulfilling their vision. See, some stuff I can't really speak on because I don't know uh, the truth of it. However, um, I can't dispute it because it I think that the media is a message and with the media, you can program people to believe anything. You can you can program people to, ooh, I gotta go buy this. You can program people to, ooh, not like this. You can program people to eat bread one day and eat vegetables the next. So we, we're all uh, programmed to think a certain way. We can program what fashion is and what is not all by um, the media. And people start to believe in what they've been taught, even if it's right or wrong so much that they're willing to fight and die and hate over it. Um, I wanna read some of the, Message in the chat because I, I want to ask some questions. Uh, let me read what Yadav says. She said, it's the association with the situation that makes it a big deal. For example, a black man with a white woman means something bad because it states that white women are somehow better than black women for being with a black man. Uh, take a look at what you see and think about the association and how it makes you feel. Um, I'm going to try to answer that. I don't think that if a black man is with a white woman or if a white woman with a black man, that means that... Um, somebody's better or somebody's worse than other. I believe it can be some people's preferences. And I, I think that what com commonality and um, being close to each other, people connect. So a lot of times um, I think black men choose white women or white, or vice versa, black women choose white men is because um, their, their, their proximity and the commonality brings them together. And if that's all you know, then that's what you're going to go after or if you're not getting love from a certain group. So let's say you're um, a black man or a black woman and you try to get love from a black person and they don't show you love, but then somebody from a different group, a different race, a different ethnic situation shows you love, then who, what human being doesn't want love? So if everybody wants affection, everybody wants to be appreciated. So you're gonna go to um, where the appreciation is. Would you want to suffer? Okay, was your loyalty so great for most people is that um, somebody can kick you in your ass and you're gonna stay getting kicked over your ass when somebody over here who's not part of your group is gonna clap for you and feed you and show you love. People don't, I be. I don't wanna be angry. So people will leave the anger, go to love and then accept the anger from the group they just left. So um, that's, I don't know if I answered it, um, but I, I, hopefully I've made sense, Yada. Um, okay, I'm a, she says, uh, it, it may not be true, but that's what the stereotype. Stereotypes have more weight in society today. Stereotypes have more weight than truth. I agree with that. I agree that people make quick assessments, and with the quick assessments, um, they prejudge you. Most people, um, we before we even analyze to see if our judgment is right, we seem to stick with it. And it takes something really, really great to shatter what you believe or what you've been taught. And most people are going to are so conservative. I'm, I'm, I mean, not in the political sense, in how they view the world, that it's hard for them to think outside the box. Conservative means they're re reluctant and resistant to change. I'm using it in that in that sense, in that sense only. Um, so people 
let, let's 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 dive in because I, I I you know how I can get real silly, but right now, um, why do so many people who don't have money uh, have so much anger to people who have money? Can you guys tell me your views on that one? Both of you, uh, you roll in a rollo in a you neon eyes. What what are your thoughts on that? I don't you was, know. You I, I, I'm oh, gonna let her go I'm first sorry. because you was cutting off. She, you was cutting off on my side, Charles. But go ahead, Leon. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I think it's for like so many different reasons. But I think one of the main reasons is because they see something they want that they can't attain, or you know, like they can't have. So they want to kind of um, demonize you having it. I think that's one reason why. Like, it's not okay to have nice things. It's not okay to be able to travel and do certain things because you can't do it. You're just angry because you can't do it. So you want to make it wrong that someone else is doing it. I think that's part of it. Um, just from what I've seen in my personal experience, um, I think that's part of it. I'm, I'm I will say that. I will say this though, it's that, it's the mindset. It depends on the person grow up mentality. A lot of parents don't teach their young daughters and sons how to be counterproductive and how to be accountable for the actions if they get themselves into a lot of trouble. Most of our people want to see a success. That's not the issue. The issue with them is that they don't want to put in the work. Mm. They believe everything should be handed to them. And that's not the way the world works. You have to do something to get something. That's just the way it is. Because if everything was free, I say this now, I know a lot of people are going to be criticizing me for this. If everything was free, it would be a lot more chaos than it is now. And I'm going to explain why. You give everybody things for free, they'll come to your house and try to get something for free. So it has to be a balance, unfortunately. Faith without works is dead. I believe it at that. Well, it's a lot of stuff I can't I can't speak on because I don't know. I'm just asking the question. But what I believe is this: um, people keep forgetting that life is not fair. And I, I I had a hell of a conversation. Um, I know a business owner, and the business runs pretty well. And um, um, I was explaining um, just by the strength of your product, um, you should be doing even I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing better, but just think if somebody came that was famous, like Tom Cruise came one time and said, hey, you have the best business ever. Y your product will be selling hand over foot. So the reason I, I bring it all up is that sometimes marketing uh, and the message, the way that people perceive things can um, boost you in a different direction than even the work you put in. So a lot of people look at people who have money like that they really work for it they they don't because there's a lot of people that make money um i'm not trying to diss anyone but let's use the kim kardashian I'm not, I'm not trying to diss her at all but what has she done to add value to people's lives other than the fantasy of her existence to put her on that pedestal so other people can see that and they kind of can hate for that they can say you know what have you done why can't i be as good and um i'm gonna go off on a tangent so people please feel free to interject but you know what people think it's 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 is it easier for somebody to give you a dollar or is it easier to earn a dollar and what, what i mean by that is all a validation like i could ask somebody let's say I, I do good work but as long as it's free um people really want to don't they don't want to donate a dollar to it but if somebody said hey charles is shit charles is awesome and uh you should pay five dollars to view him or if somebody like snoop Dogg said hey go check out charles then people wouldn't mind it feel like they wouldn't mind Give me a dollar and then I can say I earned it. But when somebody just gives you a dollar, they feel like they're doing you a favor. And I think that's what confuses people when it comes to people of wealth. Um, I don't think people know how to discern um, did they really earn it or was it given to them? And I think that causes dissension and it causes animosity and it causes anger. And like I say, people should not be angry about stuff they can't control because um, a lot of times it's all about exposure. You could be the best talent on the planet Earth. Nobody heard of, has heard of you and they wouldn't give you a dollar. And is, earning a dollar is hard. I think getting one dollar from one person is harder than anything because most people um, 
don't see value in getting giving something to somebody else hasn't said it's great. I hope I'm not rambling too far or, or over, but I, I think that's what it is. Um, like let's say it's five years from now, and I'm on the uh, I'm gonna get put on the Tonight Show or something, and people will be all willing to give me uh, twenty dollars to go see Charles talk. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's crazy, man. I don't understand it, and I I don't get angry about people's success because I want to see everybody successful. I want to see everybody who's on YouTube succeed if that's what they're trying to do. Me, as you guys didn't know, I just want to have dialogues and yeah. have fun. And I just did a little bit of rambling, but please don't let me uh, uh, dominate it because I just want you guys to get in and say whatever you think. So what, what are your thoughts? on? Well, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to see everyone successful. Okay. I don't want to see evil people happy. I don't. Okay. So I guess that's just my human part coming out right now. Like, no, I don't want to see them happy and stuff like that because it makes me angry. I understand <laughs> when it. I, whenever wrong. I see something good happen to someone who is just inherently evil hmm. or just a person who is just their main goal was to cause dis destruction, you know, no, I don't want to see anything good happen to them. As a matter of fact, I hate them. So, no, I oh, don't. Wow. So <laughs> How do you define, tell me how you define hate, Neon Eyes. How do you define it? Um, wow. Um, I would have to say, like, for me, when I think about, like, the term hate, just anything that makes me feel repulsed or something, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to describe it. I don't know. But anything that I... I just disdain or dislike for mm -hmm. um, anything that I could like see myself like destroying. That's something okay. that I hate. Like, okay, I, I can get that. that. That's that's kind of where my thoughts would lie. When I hate, when I hate, I want you to cease to exist. And if yes. I could eradicate you from existence, um, I, that's why I really don't hate you. I, get, I I try to avoid it because then I must turn into the Terminator and I must destroy you. <laughs> but that's, that's you know that's what I think. Um, for anybody who's tuning in, I don't know who's watching or not. Feel free to give me a thumbs up if you want to join. Uh, let me know. Say something in the chat. I will drop a link or I will email you because we want to keep it from being crazy. Um, but you know, I don't mind. If people want to join, just let us know. I, I want everybody to get in, everybody to talk. And like I say, it's, we don't have to stay on this subject because I'm always open. I always try to have the most open hangouts ever. And I just want people to get in and dialogue because that's way how you learn and grow. And you know, that's how we have a better world. Um, for the seven. I want, I want to respond to her. Go ahead. I want to respond to that. It's nothing wrong with the hate. I don't hate the evil. I'm going to tell you why I don't hate them. I understand their perspective. And what I mean by that is we the people love to be abused. And what I'm saying by that is this. If you want them to change, we as a collective have to change. We have to show them that we don't need them. We have been relying on their resources for a long time. If everybody shuts off all stuff, in the whole world, it will they will collapse faster. They understand that you need certain things and you will still buy the things that you are against. Case in point. People say they don't like um, Donald Trump. Yet you have pastors. You have people in the pro-blacks. You have certain sectors who support that man, who give him money and donate to him. And they go back to the church talking about him. So people say one thing, but behind closed doors, <laughs> if they do a favor for you, or oh, now they're your friend. So we have to be mindful of what we say we hate because we all going to be tested of what we hate and what we really do hate. That's my take on that. I, well, me... I when I was referring to like things or people that I hate, I mean, I was like mostly thinking about like individuals as far as that, you know, people who are close to me, like family members. Um, okay. That's what I think about the most. Cause I, I think I've experienced it so much from just family. So family, really, can't that's turn on you. family can't turn on you faster than somebody that's a stranger. That is definitely true. I definitely could agree with that. Right. 
Right. Because, you know, they're the closest to you and supposedly they love you the most. And I think that's why the hurt runs a lot deeper with family and friends because they're the closest ones to you. Um, they have more access to like your emotions. That's, and why you can't, that's why you can't put your trust in them 100% because they're like, uh, what is it called? What do you call those things? Chameleons. They'll change on you. The minute you start doing things that they don't like, they all get together and chameleon try to lift that lizard off of you. Lift that face off of you. That's why you can't tell them everything. If they ask you certain things, they're none of their business. Don't tell them everything. Right. Yeah, Keep that's it to true. Your, I, that's the problem yeah. with this. Is the problem with women that I try to show them. I'm not trying to disrespect. Most women talk too much to their girlfriends and their mothers and aunties. And I'm gonna say this: if you got a good man and he's successful, do not have them around your. Your miserable family members, because they will twist on you and tell stories about you that's not partly true or somewhat true and have that man leave you. I have seen stories like that. I tell women all the time that I have clients. Do not allow your mother and them to see. Let them know that, oh, you got a man? I want to see him. No, you're not going to see him. I know you, If you know how they are, don't have him come in there. You will see that man leave so fast. It's going to be It's going to be your fault at the end of the day. Be discernment of who you introduce to in this society. Man, um, I think that uh, everybody um, has to figure out what's right for them. That's that's always going to be my answer. And I think there's positive ladies, just like I think there's positive men, and there's negative ladies, just like there's negative men. Um, I don't have any real advice when it comes to. Uh, uh, relationship between men and women in that aspect, I would just say, uh, be honest with each other. And if you guys are in a situation, make sure that you guys are analogous and trying to go the same way. Every All family won't be detrimental. Um, we live in a system that's been so uh, disjointed and broken up now that people have lost that connection. And it's it's causing a lot of dissension. And it, it's, it's more going on than I know. A lot of it is due to policy. Some of these laws, some of these rules, are wrong and is really damaging uh, relationships of all types and family structures and is causing a lot of animosity. Plus, um, even though people do promote that um, employment is up, but the problem is the cost of living has increased way more than employment. Like I was driving around, uh, you know, I live in Los Angeles, so I was going to a place in Long Beach. I had a friend, I was dropping them off. And these houses are small little shacks, small little shacks seven hundred thousand dollars you know one bedroom one bath shack no driveway seven hundred thousand dollars and most people are not even making in los angeles i think the average is thirty something thousand dollars so you expect these people to be able to live and you know it's so and, and the rent the rent is outrageous so of course sometimes when people that will cause anger because the greed of uh, the, the, the over and that's that comes from people that's not just from corporations this is the average person the average person is saying um since i paid fifty thousand dollars and the market says my house is worth seven hundred thousand dollars even though i only paid fifty thousand dollars for the house you know instead of being humane and just selling it for a little bit of a profit we got to make the astronomical profit because that's what the market dictates and because it dictates that it causes people to be so angry because you blame it on the system instead of blaming it on the people who can't control the system that is us so a, a lot of things are, are just uh, beyond our control. And first, for people who join it, anybody can join. Let me know. Drop your email. Um, you can, it's going to be hidden, and I can uh, send you the link in email. And if you guys really want, I can drop it in the chat. Just let me know. Because I just, you know, I'm just trying to keep from people. No. Oh, that's okay. Don't, yeah, I won't do don't, that. Don't drop it in the chat. We, yeah. yeah. Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> do, that. Yeah, don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Anybody who wants to get on and talk, this is open for everybody. So, so I want to I want to elaborate. I want to elaborate with you. Ahead, said, man. Ahead, I, I see. It. I say I see it like this. If you know who you're dealing with, you cannot introduce everybody to everybody, man. Because any little mistake that you make could cause a friendship. Okay. That's why I will not introduce certain people to certain people I truly know. I have to really know who you are before I introduce you to them. Okay. Because I, when you build a relationship with somebody and you don't know them, you just don't put them on just like that. You have to test them. You have to test people 
I take my time with people. I don't, that's why a lot of these Negroes ask for my number. I don't give out my number just to everybody. And that's especially for a woman. And she could be attractive. I'm very discerning of who I give my number to. Because we have some different type of energy that is, some people are so off. And she could, Neon could relate to this. Charles, you probably could relate to this. You give somebody your number, they calling you all types in the morning. They calling you all types of night. You tell them, listen, what is you calling me for? It's not that important. If, if you're not in a stream emergency, what are you calling me for? Or oh, I just want to tell you about some, some channel and listen. Listen, I ain't got time for that. I'm on my purpose. What happened? Where's the money at? That's the type of mentality I deal with. So if somebody is on some regular stuff, I can't introduce them to somebody that's on business. They're going to look at me like, what are you talking to me? Send me this person for. Who is you now? This is what we got. We got to start talking about, Charles, because this is real, man. We're talking about it now. So I, yeah. I think that um, I'm a little different, um, but not a lot. The reason I say I'm a little bit because um, I think I'm very discerning. So I, once I have a dialogue with somebody, if, if let's say you're a hell of a good actor, I can see that we shouldn't associate. So I really take my time trying to learn people. But if, if you cross that threshold where we can't connect, then um, once I assess you, I will know who I can introduce you to and who not. But I take my time. I don't rush into things. I'm I'm very patient. So I will dialogue right. with you and we can talk and we'll keep it on a one-on-one -on -one level and we can be in public venues. But as far as me connecting you on a business level, you have to prove that to me because I don't trust it. I don't really trust anyone. You have to, um, cause anybody, right. anybody can make a mistake. We're all human. So I just try not to, uh, put myself in a situation with anyone that I don't want to be in where I can't, uh, sometimes somehow mitigate or lessen a detrimental outcome. You know, hopefully that makes some type of sense. Um, it is what it is. I think that, um, you should be really, really careful with the people that you let into your circle. And, um, I'm not saying you can't be friendly and cool with everybody, but people will disappoint you, and disappointment leads to anger, and anger leads to suffering. <laughs> Star Wars reference. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what it is with me. Um, I, I just think that so many people let little things make them angry, and that's what really amazes me. I'm not saying you shouldn't get angry at the big things, but you shouldn't get angry at the little things. You, can, you shouldn't get angry at somebody not sharing with you. You shouldn't get angry at um, a job not hiring you because they don't have to hire you. You shouldn't get angry about, unless somebody um, stops you from, from living, stops you from, from surviving, or they hurt you physically, you should get past it, like driving in traffic. I do understand road rage and people get mad all the time, but you got to understand these people are oblivious to what's going on in your life. These people are just trying to get to work or they're not trying to get to work. And there's going to be some people that's going to be um, assholes and cut you off on purpose and try to not let you over because it's a race to them. But don't let that get to you. That's just my belief. That's what I say to people. But anyway, any, you guys feel free to jump in because, you know, I'll just keep on going. Let me, let me get let me get one more case. If I'm with Neon, for example. And she's an attractive woman. Mm -hmm. I will not introduce her to every guy because you have thirsty guys. Mm. They know you with the female. They're going to start sending messages after messages after messages after messages. And the woman already let you know she's taken. Yeah. I know sometimes they lie. Sometimes they lie, but not all the time. And what you're going to find out is that sometimes you better off introducing her to somebody that might be your enemy more than your friend because your friend going to try to creep on the low. Your okay. enemy, you already know where he stands. Yeah. Your friend, your close friend would be the one that try to stab you in the back, talk mad smack about you because of whatever relationship you have. He's one way with you when he's with you, but when he sees you with his with your woman, it's a whole thing. And some women have told me, and I'm glad, this is what I love about sisters and other nations of women. They have told me, oh, that Negro, be careful with that Negro. Something about them. Nine times out of ten, they on point. Pay attention to what your woman says sometimes because she could save you from a lot of headache. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I do agree. However, uh, anybody can do anything. So I'm not worried about what any woman does or what any man does. Um, it's, it's for me to be tight in what I'm doing. And um, if a woman wants to leave and 
creep with another dude, that's what she going to do. But if I am not with that, then I'm going to let her go. So I'm not trying to stop people from doing what they want to do. Um, I am. I agree with you when I say you got to be careful who you dealing with, because if you don't trust somebody or you think they have to know good, don't introduce them. Don't get them in your circle. But I'm not one to ever try to tell a woman who she can't talk to. I'm, I'm not trying to run her like that. You know, no, no, a- no, definitely not. I'm just saying I'm just saying in preference, you know, yeah. in reference to if I'm with Neon and I introduce you to her, mm-hmm. if she gets with you, I already know what time it is because I know the type of person you is. Yeah. I just don't like that sneaky stuff. I'm not talking about the woman because woman could be sneaky too. Both parties could be sneaky. If yeah. you know the person is sneaky, do try, try not to introduce, don't put yourself in that particular situation, introduce you to someone that's sneaky because you're putting yourself in harm's way. Let's just be I, real. That's man to man. I agree with that. But you know what? I think it's hard. This, this is interesting now. I think it's hard for people to discern sneaky people because some people that you got to really observe for a while to find out that they're they're sneaky because some people just know how to be fake so well. You can never tell that they're not real because they're fake so real. You got to you got to catch them in a, a moment where they have to get real before you see the real them. Some people are that it happens in marriage. It happens in job. You you hire somebody. They've been yeah. working at the job for, for, for three or four months and they turn lazy on you. You get Dudes get married, um, and women too. Uh, dudes get married with a woman, and she's freaky. So as you get married, she cuts off. And the dude is really generous. Then you get married, and he's El Cheapo, and he ain't doing shit, and he ain't got no money in the first place. He just played you. So that's the problem. You gotta really be discerning. You gotta really watch people. And I'm like I said before, I love people. I love them, and I'm very gullible. But I don't trust no one. I, I trust you to be a human. And I, I, I understand we make mistakes and you make mistakes. We all make mistakes. However, I don't put anything past you. And that's the whole, my whole premise is don't get angry because people are going to do what they do. If you don't, people, listen, I'm more impressed by somebody keeping their word than somebody breaking their word because I think most people are not going to keep their word. So it is what it is. And it's, it's always circumstances. Um, I'm about to go on a little tangent. It was a, um, I forgot, a couple of days ago, um, I, I was talking to Guy King and I, I he, we were talking about playing Street Fighter. And um, I was really, I tried to download Street Fighter. I tried to, I couldn't get it to download from PlayStation 4 and I couldn't, like, I couldn't get it. To, uh, well, I could have, like, found out later that Amazon Prime now had, I could have got it delivered that day, but I couldn't hop on. And it, it, I told him I'm going to hop on and play. But if, if you don't know the whole circumstance, you're like, damn, Charles broke his word. And that really bothered me because I hate breaking my word. I'm like, damn, I should go do a video and say, man, I tried to get it, but I couldn't. But a lot of times, we only see it from one perspective and that could make, you know, what if, what if, um, what if he was waiting for a ride from me and I didn't call him or something. So people would be angry. And I say, once you, you can't let stuff cause anything that happens, so you shouldn't let stuff that you can't control make you angry. But I know it's, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. You know, I can't, I can't hate people for, for, I can't hate geniuses for existing. I can't hate dummies for existing. I can't hate tall people for existing or short people or, hermaphrodites or anybody. I mean, I don't have to like anything, but I don't have to hate you for it. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get angry, but don't get angry about everything. Don't get angry because there's too many fast food restaurants and there's too many. I mean, you can not. I go, I'm going to say I'm stupid. I'm going to say too many liquor stores in black neighborhoods. But you maybe should get angry about that. But then again, I like beer. So shit, I want I want some type of, <laughs> some type of any, any creation product near my house. <laughs> coming in here, coming near you, some good beer. <laughs> I'm joking. But anyway, um, that's what I think. I think that people... We need to uh, not let our anger rule us unless anger can be motivation. So if you're like Michael Jordan, angry because they cut you from the team and it makes you become the best athlete on the planet because of it, then all by all means, let your anger go. But don't let everything, don't be angry about everything. That's just my belief. But, you know, you guys can talk. You can over talk me, interject. Go ahead, say something, please. You know what gets me? Like, like when someone is in like a moment of anger, Mm -hmm. like intense anger and then you have someone that's trying to calm them down or someone that's trying to um tell them like not to feel like you need to calm down just stop like no i think that you need to let people feel because i I think it can make them even angrier because like when people are angry they tend to hyper focus like on that person or thing that made them angry to begin with so i think you need to just let people process it and feel it in that moment as long as they're not hurting anyone totally so agree. they can let it out because if they suppress it and they don't feel it it's just going to hurt them Yeah, you know like they don't need to hold that stuff in like especially men like you know they you just get it out I, I never tell someone like 
yeah, you need to calm down. Like, don't do that. Just like, no, just be quiet, like back, back up a little bit and like kind of let them go through whatever they're going through. Cause in the end they're decompressing and that's going to yeah. help them like lift that weight off of them. You know, I totally agree. A hundred percent. Um, I get into good dialogues that get heated all the time. And, um, I always try to tell my friends, don't ever say you're not angry when you're angry. And if you need to let it out, let it out, but don't hold on to it. Let it out. Say, Charles, I'm pissed. And you could, as long as you ain't hitting me, I can accept it. You know, so even if you start yelling at me, I may say, stop yelling at me because I don't like it. But if you want to yell, just say, I want to yell, damn it, and keep on going. It's better to let it out than hold it in. I'd rather you let it out instead of you holding it in and one day exploding and hit me. And then I got to do something that you and I both won't like. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I totally agree with you. My only uh, caveat to that is you got to understand where you're at when you do that because you, you can get angry at the police. But if you let your anger out and there's a wrong type of police around you, your life could be ended. Or you can be angry at a workplace when you work for an, for an employer. And if you let it out at the wrong time, you get terminated and that's your means of survival. So always be yeah. cognizant of your surroundings and your environment before you let your anger out. So any of my friends, you can always your anger out on me. Just don't hit me. You know, and just don't spit on me. I don't like that either. I'm going to be upset by that. But <laughs> I'm joking. But um, so I, I've been pretty practicing not to t when i'm angry i'm gonna tell you i'm angry i'm gonna tell you i'm starting to be uh irritated by you and uh, you're annoying i don't mind you seeing that bit of weakness because i can control it I, I don't have to let you know but if i trust you enough to let you in my circle i'm going to let you know you know you're annoying me right now you're pissing me off i'm not liking this could you please stop and i might do it controlled and then i'll say you know what because i'm getting pissed i'm leaving now so i don't because uh, i'm a calm anger you my anger is like that and if i get passionate you, you, that means I like you enough not to hit you. So that's great. Because most of the time, if, if I don't get passionate, then uh, yeah, it's not good. You know. <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't. I usually get passionate with people that I care about in my life. So if I don't get passionate, like um, I'm, when I'm talking to you with some passion, that means I'm just let, I'm letting out enough not to calculate doing something premeditated. But anybody else, if I don't get like that, and I tell you I'm angry, then you better watch it because I'm gonna shut up. And I'm gonna start thinking. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. <laughs> oh man, you guys, you know what? I'm. Let me say this. I thank everybody. For, I'm not about to end it all, but I'm just saying I'm thank. I'm happy that you guys joined me. This has really been really pleasurable. Um, I, I'm happy for everybody in the chat. I'm happy for anybody listening. If you're listening, uh, I appreciate every thumbs up or thumbs down or comment you leave whenever this is done. And uh, if you guys want to join in and talk about whatever you want. Um, you just shoot your email and uh, put it in the chat. And um, after my little bit of discernment, I'll say, okay, I select you and I'll send you uh, the link. <laughs> I'm joking. But anyway, um, I, if you guys, anybody who's tuning in, I don't know who's tuning in now or not. This is just a talk about, because we live in a world that's so, so angry. That we don't even understand it. A lot of anger is not uh, addressed. And I, I think, uh, like I say earlier, um, I remember I was on Marcus Brown's channel, and he had a little bit of a clip of LeBron talking. And in the in in chat, LeBron said, um, I wouldn't sit across from Donald Trump. And I'm thinking, that's, that's, that's crazy when you get so angry that you wouldn't even have a dialogue with somebody. There should always be some time, unless it's your life is threatened, that you should be able to discuss something. Because if you can't have a dialogue, you can't solve anything. So even when I don't agree with people, even if we got a different point of view, I always want to dialogue with you. And um, it's a lot of people that I don't agree with that I listen to on YouTube. Right? And it's, I even listen to people that hate black people. I'll listen to hear what they got to say just to understand them. And I don't hate them back because that's not conductive. Uh, it's not It's not going to be positive. And so but I try to understand what have, how has my existence of being a beautiful, black, handsome man that I am, how come you hate me and my people? Why? why? I'm joking. But that's what I don't understand. I don't understand hate. Like people, I, and um, I don't understand why people are angry. I do. I'm starting to learn by these dialogues because uh, Brother Seven is really educating me on some things that uh, a lot of times is the program, it's the the media, and uh, people that are way more educated than me that have said that it's sometimes it's the policies and the when you force people to do stuff they don't want to do, it causes hate. When you force people to assimilate or to be with groups they don't really want to associate with in the first Point, it makes them have resentment and resentment leads to anger. It's kind of like if we talk about um, the whole situation with Palestine and Israel. You came and took these people's country and created a country and then you forced them to a small thing. Then you try to force them out. 
Of course they're going to fight you. Because this, this we've been here for thousands of years, and now you're going to tell me I'm a second-hand citizen in a place of my ancestors? You know what I mean? So I'm not saying it's right or wrong, right. but it, it goes like that. And some of the stuff you were saying, it, it's bigger than you and I. It's bigger than us. We don't even understand it. And the media can play one one thing, and we see one side, and, you know, I'm not saying what's right or wrong, but you can... Anybody can be painted as a villain, as a victim, as, as we do know. Do you, do you realize that China owns part of California and they're not telling everybody that? China is the biggest, most populous, most manufacturing, I think, nation on the planet Earth. So it wouldn't surprise me with that. You said it before. I haven't did research to confirm that, but I do know they, they're, they're pretty powerful. And I know that they're, they're really um, doing a lot of business in Africa. So how could I? And I know they own a lot of Hawaii too. So what am I to say? The name of today. And on top of that, you have a lot of, you have a lot of sisters and a lot of brothers doing relationships of businesses with them. To whereas, yeah, they own a lot of soul food places in California, Chicago, yeah. New York. You have Mexicans, quote unquote, doing it too. Our mm -hmm. people are going backwards instead of forward, Charles, and that has a lot to do with. We want to have the hottest thing. That's what matters to us. We're not, we're not leaving anything for the children. And what I mean by that is spiritually to be better, mentally to be more able to deal with what's going on, and to have certain assets. They don't have anything. And this is why a lot of young children are killing their parents. Yeah, I understand it. I, I say this. It's, yeah, but it's all it's, it's the system. It's not... Listen, the system set up certain things and education is key. But when you don't get the same education, when you don't have this, if your parents are trained, how can they train you? And then when you find out later in life that they're not looking out for you and you just, uh, it's painting one picture, but you see a different picture, of course you're going to get angry. It's a lot of people like that. And that some of it comes from a sense of entitlement. Especially, okay, look, if I'm if I'm in the most poorest country on the earth and everybody else is poor, I'm not angry. But if I'm in the richest country and everybody else is rich and I'm poor, I'm gonna be angry about that. When I see somebody else living a good life and I can't live that life, I'm gonna be angry about that. When I see, um, and it's 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 kind of getting out of control where I, I think it was a system to do certain things, but now it's, they, they couldn't, you know, some stuff is planned, but we don't know how the implementation is going to be. So now, uh, as you see, the family structure is deteriorating and that's due to um, they didn't understand how the policies would really affect the population as a whole because if one person can benefit from it then why not everybody else you know what i mean so you see less marriages you see uh less connection with people you see more disposable men um i'm right. and you see more angry women and i'm it's angry men too but i'm saying because most women in my opinion want to nest and have a family and connect but when you can't find the men that you feel should be your partner and women are way more uh you can correct me neon eyes women are way more uh, selective when it comes to a mating partner or a husband than men you become disgruntled because you're like well i was taught this was going to happen for me and i'm, I'm 45 years old and i'm not married and i have kids and i'm mad and same for men because you got men saying, Why aren't the ladies choosing me? I'm a great man, I'm working as much as I can. I can't help it that the corporation won't hire me. Damn it, I, I flip a good burger, baby. I'll take care of you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a lot of anger on both sides, and um, it I is. understand that you know. The thing, they, the thing about it, the thing about it is, Charles, is that most women and most men have allowed others to dictate their future. Case in point. Yep. I tell the young bloods to focus on their purpose, you know, and I have two clients that travel over 50 countries. So I got them to see that. I said, before you're 30 years old, have fun, enjoy life. Yeah. Before you get into a committed relationship, you should not be worrying about what the woman think of you in your 20s. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of these older men and some of the guys my age, they still focus on high school stuff. And when you see a lot of the young people is looking at us like, why is they trying to compete with us? They had their chance. They messed up. That's not our fault. Yeah. Why are you trying to penalize us for? We're trying to do better than you. Mm -hmm. And I love talking to the young people because I want them to do better than us, man. And there's a lot of older men is hating on young guys because they figure it out. It's not, it's out, it's out for we figure it out, not they. 
But it took us a long time because we have a lot. We have too much distractions. We allow the distractions to get to us. Yeah. In most cases, no disrespect to the ladies, you could be a distraction. It's not your fault. I'm just keeping it real. You can't be a distraction if a man is on his purpose. Yeah. So sometimes you need to be on your back seat, ladies, and let the man do his thing and try not to be in his way so that you could have a better, healthier lifestyle. That's my take on that. But you know what? Um, I got to give a shout out. Um, I always got to BGS it more gives out great information. And um, one thing is you don't, and there's other people that I think give out great information too, but I'm going to specifically, I'm going to use two things. Um, a, a lot of men are not raised by fathers anymore. So a lot of men don't even have the discipline. And that's why a lot of men, when they go to the military, they learn discipline and focus. And if you're not teaching people how to be a productive citizen or to stay on your focus, it's easy to get distracted by women because women is genetic. Most men want women. If you're heterosexual, you want a woman. And your whole goal genetically is to procreate. So a lot of them can't uh, control themselves. They've been you know, you see all this um, stuff on TV and you see all these videos and um, people, you know, sorry, like they use Dan Bazarian. You see a guy with a lot of women. You want a lot of women, too. So instead of trying to become uh, an attractive man, you go after your attraction. And that can be detrimental to your goal. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit. And that when you have you when you showing that, hey, all I got to do is dress a certain way and I can get some ladies and it doesn't work. It causes anger. So if I could give any advice to any young man that's listening, if any young man would listen to me, I'm not saying I'm making this for young men, but uh, I would say, figure out who you are and what your purpose, what you like, people say be about your purpose, but a lot of people don't even understand what a purpose is. What do you mean by purpose? Um, how, if I could say something, think about this. You need to survive. So how are you gonna survive and what are you good at doing to help you survive? What do you, what would bring you, like everything can't help you make a profit or earn an income, but what skill do you have that if no one can help you, you could barter to survive? You know what I mean? And that's what I would tell people, figure out what you are good at doing and focus on doing that so you can survive. And um, that's it. And as long as you know that you can survive, that radiates confidence and confidence becomes attraction. And um, for me, I'm always trying to bring some type of value to anyone. So if anybody stops by my channel, this channel, our channel, I want you to smile. I want you to feel good. I want you to know that you're great. And don't worry about failure because you need to fail to learn to succeed. If you don't try, you never know what you can do and can't do. So don't get angry about what you can't do. You know, you say, okay, I know I'm not good at that, but maybe I'm good at that. And use it as a learning experience. Use every single failure as a chance to improve because you will improve, you know, or you know what you can't do and you'll stop wasting time. So everything should be about um, trying to figure out what you are good at, whatever it may be. I don't care if it's tying shoelaces. You know, you could probably think about fashion ways, tying shoelaces. It's, it's always ways to survive. And that's what I would want any young man to know. Um, now, advice that I could give the women, um, this is, this is going to sound wrong, but my only advice I could really give to women is try to understand that men are different than you. Because a lot of times women look at men like we should feel like women, but we don't, we are, we're different. And it's not saying that you're wrong with your feelings, just understand that men and women are different and our motivations are different. So we just look at things a little differently. And that's the only advice I can give to women, just try to be more understanding. I'm not telling you to, to give in, even I want you to give in. I'm telling you to understand that men don't think like ladies and the same thing with men. Uh, Women don't think like men. There are some. There's always exception to the rules, but that's just what I think. And I'll be quiet because I'm not a dating coach. I'm not a, a man that's going to tell you how to be. Um, I'm just telling you to be the best man you can be. And if you want some great advice, I throw out some people I like listening to real fast um, when I want to learn some stuff. I like uh, I like Master Yao. He's pretty good. If you never heard of Master Yao, go check him out. I like um, Kevin Samuels on his styling cologne game. He's a good person to listen to for men. This is for the men. And I think BGS for both men and women. He puts out good information. And I'm not saying you guys are going to agree with everything these people say. I'm just saying these people get good information and I listen to them. And I just I try to pick and choose what's right for me. And you got to figure that out on your own. And I'm done with my talking. So anybody, you guys can feel free to speak because I did a lot of, I gave a lot of verbiage. <laughs> oh, anyway. So people, you guys tell me your thoughts. Leon, you could go ahead. 
Uh, I'm just listening right now. I'm just, I don't know I'm if she still, did. I'm still gathering my thoughts about the whole um, relationship stuff. I'm not. I'm not a dating coach either. <laughs> yeah. Let me so. let me ask you a question, Leon. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have an issue of your man being on his purpose and not focusing on you as much as he should? Would that bother you? Hmm. No, I mean that's a part of the sacrifice. See. That's something that you sacrifice when you're with someone who's successful or, or when you're with someone who's goal oriented or goal driven. I mean, you, the, the he doesn't need to focus on me all the time. I mean, that's why I have family and friends and hobbies and interests. Well, I mean, I don't want him to get sick of me. I want him to still crave me and stuff. Of course, you want a balance. But I mean, let uh, that's a part of manhood. I mean, no, I wouldn't have an issue with that. Not at all. Uh, this is interesting. See, this is what I, what I, I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna say some silly stuff, silly, silly stuff. Um, this is not really silly. <laughs> silly, silly. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> here it, it gets you, other seven. Um, what I want is a woman that is an asset. Don't stop me from what I'm trying to achieve. Help me get there. See, if you are not helping me get where I need to go, then I don't need you. And I hate to say that, ladies, because you're great. But I'm trying. If I'm trying to get somewhere, help me get there. Listen, if I need a car, you bad baby, but to get this car, don't say, well, we need to go that way. See, you're going, you're in opposition to my goal. And everybody, both men and women should be finding somebody that's trying to get where you want to go. Don't try to change people. I'm not trying to change no chick at all, no lady. Uh, if you don't want to do what Charles wants to do, uh, you're free to go. Goodbye. You are dismissed. And that's not to be negative to you. I'm just trying to tell you that's what I'm about. And I don't want to stop you from your goal. If if, if I got a, a super duper super cooking chick that can make some money, I'm all into her to help her make that money because she's gonna make it great for us. You know, so that's what I'm about. I'm not trying to stop you. See, I'm a, you got to be complimentary to your man or to your partner or to whoever you're dealing with. If you guys are not, if you're not complimentary, if you're not helping them, if you're not improving them as a person, then you're a detriment. Be honest with yourself. I think too many people lie to themselves. You have to make their life easier. If you, I mean, situation happen, stuff is going to go wrong, but be on the same goal, be on the same purpose and be able to morph into that super big. You can't be the same person, but you got to be, you know, you got to be Voltron together. You can't walk the same way. You, if, you, if one Voltron want to go this way and other Voltron want to go that way, it's going to break apart. We got to stay connected, mighty lions. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm stupid, but you get what I'm talking about, right, people? You guys understand that, and that's what I believe. I believe that uh, a lot of men, uh, and this is, dang, why you to go make me go here? A lot of men uh, think that, uh, Woman is their purpose, and it's cool that you want women, but your purpose should be able to improve anybody's life that you interact with. So try to learn how to improve people's lives, and that's what I would tell any man. Try to become the best man you can be. So when you ever step to any lady, you gonna make her life better from you being in it. She's gonna want to be in your world because you are it. You get? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I know. I, I I agree. I definitely hear what you're saying, Charles. I have a one tolerance rule. If that female is trying to distract me from my purpose, she gots to go. I tell her straight up, go find somebody else, whoever that may be. Get out now because you are not going to distract me from what I'm supposed to do. If you have a problem with me on my purpose, you gots to go. There's other men that will cupcake and lay up in the bed with you all day, 24-7, or move in with you. Which a lot. Let me ask you this question. That's a question I want to ask Neon. I'm gonna put her on a hot seat. Neon, okay. let me ask you this question. <laughs> Have you ever had a man move in with you? No, absolutely not. No. If 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 your man was to say, or any man in particular was to move in with you, would you have respect for him? Because he moved in with me? Yes. Mm. Would you have respect for him in the long haul? First of all, I, I wouldn't allow any man to move in with me. If it's not a family member, then no, he cannot move in with me. That's just, that just doesn't happen around here. Okay. So, 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 so okay. I don't really know, I don't really know how to answer that because. No, no, you, 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 you're going to answer it because I'm going to get it out of you. So you just admit. I just want this on publication that you admit that you don't want your man to move in with you because you don't you will not have respect for him. Would you agree I with that? 
I don't know how to answer that because I can't see myself allowing a guy to move in with me. Like if we're not engaged to be married or if I'm not already married to you or Mm -hmm. if we're not like working through something or something we have some an issue that we're working through or if it's like a crisis situation um right that's different but if i'm just dating you or yeah. if you're my boyfriend and no like yeah, no you can't move in with me i'm sorry all right <laughs> so all I right I don't know if that let, answers let, your let, question let, or not. I, I, you, you're gonna, you go, I got you. I got you. See, I got you good. And I like this. You, 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 I know what you're trying to say. You're trying to get around it. Here's the thing. No woman in her right mind will want her man whether he's married. I had a woman that was married on my show. Mm-hmm. And she told me when her husband moved in with her, she was after three months not filling the marriage. Any man that moves in with a woman, I personally don't have respect for him. Okay. Um, because I'm... you you better off going back to your parents than, because a woman has more controls. That's her place. You in her castle. That's not your place. It's not a we when it comes to a female. Okay. Because you in her you in her place, and they have every right to tell you what to do, when to come in, because a lot of women have they change swings. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, you're working at a certain time. You come in at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. In her mind, she's looking at your schedule. Where's this nigga coming in at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning? Ain't no ain't no place opening up no 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. She's mm-hmm. going to give you a hard time. It's just in some nature. It's just a nature thing. It's, a, it's important for a woman to move in with a man. I do not agree with any man, even relatives, to move in with a woman. I had my um God rest his soul, my uncle moved in with his woman. Oh, she was giving him hell, man. Hell. Because she ain't respect him. It's not a it's not good, man. It's not good to move in with a woman. I'm gonna leave it at that. Hmm. Okay. Um I don't like I'll also add oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I speak after you both of you guys. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to add that. And also for me, like just speaking from like personal standpoint, like it creates a power exchange that I'm just really not interested in. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm taking care of him. I don't want to feel like, you know, I have some kind of like power over him to tell him this or that, or I don't know. Like it just, it, it, for me, that's like an awkward position to be in because mentally it just creates like, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's, for me, it would just be awkward. Like, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just but, want the guys to hear this because, you know, a lot of guys say I'm crazy when I say these things. I had women personally sending me messages saying, you are, you know us better than we know ourselves. Because it's true. It does not make sense for a man to move in with a woman. It does not. It does not make sense. To, if I was to move in with my woman... I lose. I'll I'll be upset with myself. I'll be honest with you. I'll be upset. It's not normal. It's the, it's not wiring. It's not. It's not. And I'm starting to see. It doesn't matter the culture of the man moving in with a woman. It's like you giving her the power. And she's going to destroy you, and she has the right to because she's looking up to you. When you looking up to her to be your savior, you got to save yourself before you can save somebody else. And you don't want her giving you ultimatums. Well, you know, if you don't do this, then you need to get out. Or, um, oh, you're too friendly or too flirty with a woman. Uh, how You know, like, it just, it just, I don't know. That's like a slippery slope. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Charles. Yeah, but it's part of, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Continue. No, I was just going to say, um, as far as, like, family members go, like, I have had situations where, um, I had a bro- one of my brothers had to move in with me, but, but it was because he was um, he had just gotten back from Iraq and he was a returning uh, war veteran and, you know, um, that kind of situation. But um, outside of that, I'm not. And, you know, like the same. It's just, you know, with family it's different, of course, you know, I'll help you here and there. But. You know, when it comes to relationships and things like that, no, ain't, you're not, you know, no guy is going to move in with me. Like, that's just not going to happen. Sorry. Not sorry. 
I'm glad you said that. I want to hear what Charles has to say. This is going to be very interesting to hear from the professor. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to always say it's a case by case basis, depending on the situation and what you're trying to achieve. Um, but I do understand that I'm not a woman, so I can't tell you from the woman's perspective. However, um, would I recommend it? No, I wouldn't recommend it. How, but let's say this, you met some guy and um, he was living out of his car, right? And he was working hard and doing what he had to do. And then that was your, you got to get into a relationship and you, you're like, hey, baby, I don't want you to sleep in your car. Um, you can stay with me for a while. Now, if he's on his grind, then I really wouldn't be opposed to it. But I think the average man would be like, nah, baby, I'm too much. I'm too much of this dude to come stay with you, but I'll come sleep over for a while. But, you know, I can't be living with you because I need to, I need to become the man for you. That's what I think that most men would do. But I'm not opposed to certain situations because, damn it, let's say it was Oprah. She was like, well, come move in my mansion. <laughs> what are you going to say? Uh, nah, nah, Miss Oprah. I'm going to tell you right now, Charles, I'm 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 I had that offer. I had that offer a couple of times of to move in with a mansion. I said no. You know my co-worker said you don't lost your mind. I said, well, go ahead and be with her. One of them did went with her, and he lost everything and so and I he was you. in debt. She yeah. put him, she matched his credit card and all that. I hear you. He had no it's respect for her at all. The, I think it's always by a case by case basis. Um, I'm, I'm a person who tries not to adhere to programming, but uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it. But I'm not saying people shouldn't like let's say you guys are in a relationship and you guys want to uh, go together on a place or something. Then by all means, doing that. But move like you say, moving to somebody else's domain, uh, they control it. You can't go into somebody else's spot and run exactly. it. Again, but it's going to be some some resentment, and sooner or later, somebody going to pop out off the mouth. And uh, how you handle that may make or break your situation. So don't even get into it where you have to be in that type of situation. You know, you know and that's a and that's a big problem. It's it's these these guys is not ashamed. I will be ashamed to ask my woman, can I move in? Well, I will be ashamed of myself. I will have a look like what the hell is wrong with me to ask my woman. I want to man, these guys have no shame. And I'm gonna tell you something, guys. These women have every right to do whatever they want to do when you're in their place because you're in their castle now. Now you're in their world, and you know. I mean, man, I can't. Even my sisters, you know, have told me that I could move in with them at one time. I said, no, 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 no. Then you got your man, and I, and he going to look at me like, why is your brother here? Oh, nah, and I'm telling you, man, it's not looking good. Yeah. <laughs> brothers, don't do it, brothers. And natures of men, do not do it, man. I'm telling y'all. I'm giving you this game on Charles' information that could save your life, man. You know, I, I want the women's you want the women to respect you, man. Get out of that place, man. Get out of that, get out of that comfort zone, man. Women don't respect men that is in that comfort zone. She wants you to be on edge. You gotta be on edge, man. They, on. That's why you think why you think the street guys always get the finest woman? Because they always on edge. You guys that work and do all this and that, you play soft. Women don't want no soft man to go home to. Some of y'all play cupcaking, pillow talking. You ain't gonna get far with her. She gonna she gonna lose interest and find somebody else. That's not a challenge. You got a challenge. You got you gotta be a challenge when you with these women's guys. Some of you ain't a challenge. I could tell by your literature. Let me say some, some stuff. I think the problem is. I, I, I can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, ahead, after, ahead, after you after you finish, ahead. I want to say something. You say something first. I I won't forget. Go for it. Okay. No, I was just gonna say real quick, and people also need to remember inviting people to stay with you from a legal standpoint say things go south and that person doesn't want to leave usually after like a 24 hour period if that person has been um that person has been staying with you legally they're a resident so you're going to have to go through a whole legal process to get them legally evicted you're going to have to go through a whole process to get them to like move out it's not going to be that easy to get rid of them so you need to remember when you invite someone to live with you or stay with you what you're actually taking on and like all the risks that come with that. It's not, it's not going to be peaches and cream fine and dandy. Oh no. A woman, a woman could get a man out the house very fast. I had, I had guys told me that the woman kicked the man out and he went to court and he lost. Oh no. Because even in court, you gotta be, let's be real. Even in court, I could agree with them. They will say, first of all, what the hell are you moving? 
I, mean, I know a lawyer particularly that does these cases, and he even said hey, it's a waste of money because he's looking at the man like, why you, why you charging me to um get that woman to stay in with you? Do you understand? I don't got no respect for you at all for moving in with a woman. You want me to take a case? Man, save your money and go get a place, man. That's what the lawyer told one of the clients. Man, go get your own place, homie, man. Don't waste your time trying to get that. Remember that story, Charles? That the dude when the the when the um the house that belongs to the woman and she burned it in Georgia. Do y'all know about that? I, think I heard about that. I'm okay, attention. that's the warning. I'm gonna mm -hmm. leave it at that. Let me say this though. Um, like I say, I'm a little different. Everything is case by case. I'm not a person that's programmed. I just think for your own freedom, if you want to have your own stuff if you can. And um, I'm not saying that people can't help each other. Sometimes a man may be that down on his luck and a woman is taking a chance on him and she chooses to invest. I just think he should take that as a help and get himself where he needs to be so he can do what he needs to do to be the man he needs to be. And what I was going to say is the problem is too many dudes are focused, like you said earlier, but I'm going to go back to it. Don't make, uh, I'm not saying you should love ladies because I, lo I love the ladies, but you shouldn't make the ladies your focus. Your focus should be trying to survive and be able to take care of yourself without anyone. That's my thing I said at first. Try to be able to be on your purpose and your purpose is to be able to survive. Um, we all need help, but be able to provide some type of help to someone else where you're not dependent on them. And if you had to move in with a lady and for like you really are dependent on her, I'm not saying you, you I, it's going to be times where, uh, Detrimental circumstances happen or uh, something critical happens and you got to stay somewhere for a while, but you shouldn't use it as entitlement and you shouldn't try to take over somebody else's spot. Get your own spot and do you how you do you, you know, unless it's family. Family a little different. Other than that, I agree with her um, beyond eyes on that one. Family a little different, but with somebody you're trying to build with, because um, I guess I'm some type of, uh, I believe a man has a certain position and a woman has a certain position. So be a man from my perspective. But that's just me, and that's just Charles, and I'm just narrow-minded, small-minded. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, oh uh, man, this has been really interesting. We went we all over the place, <laughs> all over the place. See, and I think you see how I could. I was angry before we started this chat, and just talking took away my anger. So now I'm happy. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh man, this this has been pretty fun. This has been extremely fun. I wish I can get more people to jump in. I got to start doing more hangouts. Like I used to. So now, I know. every day this week, I'm going to do a hangout. I don't know what tomorrow's going to be. I'm going to look at the list. But um, we'll do something. It's going to be something at the same time. All right. Feel free. This is great. Any, anybody is just tuning in, um, uh, give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It matters not. Um, the, the whole thing was just about anger, and it's been a great dialogue. But my dogs are always great. And Neon Eyes is an awesome person, and What the Hell Up 7, one of the best YouTubers that you need to watch if you don't watch him, because he'll have you laughing, especially when he goes in on the ladies. He goes in. He's, you got to listen to this, this guy. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'll tell you what. If Neon listened to me, she's going to say her girlfriend, say, we're going to get that nigga. I'm tired of that nigga. Wait the hell up 7. No, don't, don't set her up, man. They're going to... She gonna be like she gonna email me say who the hell you think you are trying to give out our secrets, <laughs> giving out our secrets. I wouldn't would, would do that. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> ah, you telling all yourself you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. You know, some people probably need to hear it. No. Mm -mm. This has been real cool. But one thing I will say I want to talk about because this is really interesting, and uh, I think a lot of anger comes from. Um, finances and people trying to survive. And one thing I think people don't think about and they take it for granted, how, you know how hard it is to earn a dollar just to go out there and see if you can earn a dollar and see if somebody would just give you a dollar for your work. It's not as easy as people think. Just to get a dollar takes some skill and some work. So I think so many people want to be rich, but they're not thinking about how hard it is to just get one buck. You know, most people can't sell and they don't have stuff to sell or you don't have a product or a skill to sell to get a dollar for. You know what I mean? Um, and, and people are not going to just give you a dollar for two seconds of work. You know what I mean? Come on now. They may, but you got to make it make it seem like it's worth it. So go out there and see if you can make a dollar in 15 minutes. Just what could you do? Exactly. A dollar. It ain't that easy. People think it is easy, but it ain't. So you got to give kudos to people that are making it. You got to give 
credit to them because they're doing something that the average person can't do. People say, well, I can make, I can be, make a million. Man, go ahead and try to make a dollar. See if you can make a thousand dollars in a day. Most people have never seen a thousand dollars in a day. You ain't never did. It. So it ain't as easy as you think. You know what I mean? So stop hating on people that's made it because they put in the work to get there, most likely. And you know, like also, I think that um, um, people need to learn how to keep their dreams to themselves. Like sometimes you gotta protect your dreams. Everyone doesn't need to know what you're up to and what you're doing and what you have in store or planned because not only are they not gonna support it, but I mean, you're gonna hear like a lot of negative talk, all the reasons why you shouldn't do it or why, you know, like, so I think people need to learn how to keep their dreams to themselves. Like don't go around just telling everyone what you're up to and what you're going to start doing. Everyone doesn't need to know that. I totally agree. I think that this, you know, I don't ever really say stuff negative, but I got to agree with you. Some people are dream crushers and everybody doesn't have that mental fortitude to survive it. So if you're going to do something, sometimes just keep it to yourself and start doing it and let people discover on their own. Because if you put it out there, some people will just, just because they're, they're just negative will do stuff to stop you from getting where you need to go. And I don't want to stop people from getting where they want to go, but got to be careful. That's discernment. You got to learn to pick and, and yes. stay away from people that can't help you. You know, some people will hinder you. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. I want you to succeed. And um, that's just my thoughts. You know, that's just dream me. killers. So many dream killers out there. Like there, I think also there, they might be a little afraid that you might inspire them to do something which is going to make they don't want to do the work. So it's like they see you, you know, on your grind and working day and night, not sleeping and, and, and things like that, it's going to inspire them to, you know, push themselves a little further. And they don't want that push because they don't want to work hard. Totally agree. That's true. I tell let me just say this, Charles. Mm -hmm. The reason why, the reason why I say I don't want Neon over there, I already got enough women steady in me, man. This woman steady's good, man. She <laughs> 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 what? No, I'm coming over there. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm oh, gonna check you. I'm, I'm checking you out. I'm checking uh -oh. you out. Uh oh. JT, this is you your fault. This is your fault, JT. <laughs> I'm blaming you, JT, for doing all the same. <laughs> oh man. Oh no. You got to get Neon to make more content because she makes good stuff. She, she's just, <laughs> she's she's she's, she's going to be a prolific YouTuber sooner or later. I see it coming for her. Because she she has a lot of good information, and she's. I, I want to say this. I want to say this though, Charles. If she come, if I was to put her on my live stream, these Negroes will lose their freaking. I just seen her video. Oh man! Oh lord! <laughs> they are, don't blame me for the for the for the Sims to come to your page. <laughs> no, no, like I don't even. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. I don't even make content really about anything. Like if you go on my channel, I. I think I only have like about nothing really. I don't know. Like I, I just, I don't know. Like I don't think it's. I don't think people would really find my page interesting. But I. Oh do yes, it they will. Yes, they, they will. will. Yes, they will. Oh yeah, they will. Uh, I, I'm gonna say something wrong. Sorry. This is. I watch a lot of ladies' uh, channels. Now a lot of ladies talk about absolutely nothing, and they got two hundred thousand subscribers talking about nothing. Just talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 Hey boo, hi boo, hi, hi, hey boo, I love you, hi boo, and it, but it's still fun and good. So if you if, if you don't have to talk about anything, because ladies support ladies, and if you're good, dudes, if dudes find you interesting, they'll support you. Dudes support women before they support men. So yeah, I'm just being honest. So you don't have to be always talking about something. I talk about nothing all the time. I even do whole streams. I'm talking about nothing. So. You, you're good. You're, you're better than you think, and you're intelligent. That's awesome. You know, that's that's a that's a unique, great quality, and you have it. You know, that's my belief, anyway. But it's a lot of it's so many people on YouTube to watch, and I'm still trying to learn. I I gotta I try to watch a variety of stuff because I hate to be pigeonholed into one type of sector. I only get a certain videos. I gotta start typing in stuff because I want to learn from everybody. It's so much to learn, and I don't want to <laughs> live. That's just me. That's just what I'm trying to do. See, I'm telling you my path. I'm telling you what I'm trying to do. I'm joking. I, I definitely agree with Charles. These are there's a lot of women that don't do a lot of talking. They got way more subscribers. If you were to do a live stream, you would have people come just because of they wanted to hear your voice. A lot of guys would love to hear your voice and women. 
and eventually you will grow faster. A lot of these women is growing faster. I've seen Jamie C. She grew fast. Yeah. Uh, Lady Mocha grew fast. Denini is starting to grow a little bit, but she does a little bit more controversial. Yeah. A view is a view. Grew fast. Yeah. A view is a view. She grew fast. There's a lot of wonderful ladies that you know say they don't say too much, and they got a lot of people watching their videos. They just want to look at the woman and see what yeah. they what they talk about. Men are thirsty. So if a girl, um. if a man sees a woman is somewhat pretty, like Jamie C, all she got to do is say, "Hey, hey, boo, hey." <laughs> and they everybody watching, and then she still say people ain't watching her, and I know they watching you because you know it, it, it is what it is. When a dude see a pretty girl, a pretty girl kid put out five videos, and we'll have a hundred thousand subscribers. Don't let her be too pretty, and that tells you the weakness of men. We just love the pretty ladies, you know. All yes, she got to do is turn around one video, show her booty one time, and dance, and say hey. Oh boo. yeah, 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 yeah. These okay. these negroes, these negroes will spend a last dollar on you, Leon. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> Stop it! Impossible! Impossible! Oh no, it's possible! It's yeah. possible! A dude, a dude could be telling you how to build a house and make a million dollars, and he was ugly when nobody watched. But let a pretty girl go and say the same thing, man! Right there! Right there! She's the next million. Subscriber on YouTube, <laughs> and she she all she got to do is read a mother mother goose books <laughs> and be pretty. <laughs> and be like, oh, I play I play video games. And all the geeks is gonna be following her. All yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Dude, it is. Yes, sir. So I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking anybody at all. Yada I'm, says that I should make a BDSM channel. <laughs> oh, you, I think that you should. I think that you should. I think that you have a lot of knowledge, and if you did that. Uh, whew, you would be it'd be ridiculous. It would be I ridiculous. think I, I think if I was to I would just say hey I think, me out. I think just by you having her on charge, you're gonna get a lot more people coming, man. Oh yeah. A lot of guys don't realize you have a woman that's attractive, but I have a mindset of her own. Oh man, I, you're gonna get a lot of attention, man. Yeah, she's she's pretty she's pretty special. She's pretty she's pretty awesome. I think she's Aww, she doesn't know thank you. she doesn't know her skill yet, but I'm trying to convince her. It's a lot of awesome ladies. Um, that I try to convince. I'm still mad that my favorite, one of my favorites, the Singularity, is not putting out any videos. But if she watches this, Singularity put out some videos. Singularity, it's a cool. You know what I'm talking about, maybe. But I'm not gonna say her name. Singularity, the Singularity put out some videos. <laughs> Sorry, I like the belt video. Oh. That, uh, <laughs> Neon, I, see, you, Neon, you Neon, 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 Neon gonna get at me at the Gmail real soon, man. I know, I know what's gonna happen. This is JP for it, man. It's yeah. your fault, JP. I'm blaming yeah, you for this. You know about just a belt, and I found it interesting. She was just talking about a belt, just a belt. So you don't got to talk about nothing, and it was interesting. <laughs> but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And just have fun. I have fun. I have fun on the YouTube streets. I, I just let it go. And I, this is like a big hug for me. When you guys talk to me, when people come in a chat and talk, and people come join in, I, I'm telling you, I have fun. If it's just one person, I'm happy. And if somebody says hi, it made my day. So I get to, if I see three or four or five people, people hop on, I'm even more happy. So I, just, I use it as a hug, uh, even the negative stuff. Because if somebody says something negative, damn it, oh, I touched you. I made you feel a certain way. That's great. You know, I'm, I'm like all eager and happy and shit. I'm like, yes. I say thank you. I'm, I'm glad you were mad. Have fun today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just dumb. I'm just dumb. This is, Great. That laugh. Oh no, not that laugh. Oh, you got it right. You got it right. <laughs> dude, dude, <laughs> just laugh on her Patreon. She did AMSR, just laughing. And she started a Patreon. Dudes be broke. I can't even get a buck. She, she be like, she be like <laughs> for my ten dollar Patreons, I'm gonna laugh straight <laughs> for ten minutes. I'm, 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 I'm broke. <laughs> oh man, just you know, she didn't got to show her face. Just put on some lipstick. And I tell you, it'd be funny. They'd be paying for it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. oh my gosh! Yeah, a lot of these guys will be broke. Yeah, they'll be <laughs> definitely be broke, man. With dealing with them. Yeah. You find you find great talent, Charles, man. I, that's why I said, man, you are one of the dudes that I could chill with, man. We could be a triple threat, man, because, you know, just me and you alone, man, we could bring out the best of any woman, man, on any given day. A lot of brothers, a lot of brothers are sleeping on you, man. You got great talent for women, man. 
It takes I, one to know one, man. I just want to have fun. I just want people to have fun. Um, I appreciate every lady that ever speaks to me because they don't have to give me that time. And I appreciate you. So I, when Neon comes on, I'm happy. When my co-host Nikki comes on, I'm happy. When Yada stops by, I'm happy. When anybody stops by, because you are all special to me. Because you don't have to do that. And that's what a lot of people forget. Um, now, and it's going to sound opposite. I love the women, but don't get uh, get confused about your desire for this for the men. Uh, love the ladies, but don't stop doing what you need to do because once you stop doing what you need to do, then you're unattractive. Don't don't do that. Just appreciate that. That's true. Reach that. Say that again. Yes, sir. Say that. Love them, love them, but don't lose your purpose. Don't lose what you need to do for the ladies because that that's unattractive. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Um, that's all I have to say. And I'm not trying to stop people from doing their life. If if your if your grind is women, then do that. But you know. Uh, that's why you don't succeed. Because when you sometimes you want something so bad, you, you really don't know how to work for it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? So uh, sometimes right. you gotta work and it'll come. You know, just work, man. Just work, just work, just work. Don't be thirsty. <laughs> Unless you're gonna help her Patreon, then be thirsty all you want. I'm joking. No, if you want something bad enough and you can't find a way, you'll make one. Say what? Repeat. Um, I said, if you want something bad enough and you can't find a way, you'll make one. I agree with that. Totally agree with that. Totally, totally agree with that. We oui, man. Oh Lord, man. I know she's gonna be taking notes on us, Charles. We're in trouble. <laughs> I'm, open book. I'm, probably, I'm the most public, private person on the planet. If you study me, it's not hard to figure me out. I'm just easy. I'm easy. I'm secretive, but I'm open. You know, I just won't tell you. That's what it is, but you get it. You can read between the lines and figure me out. There's no, it's no, no puzzle. It's no puzzle. I'm just like a easy leg on it. together. You know what I mean? It fits. It fits. Oh man. Man. Uh, this has been real great. Now we, I can keep on going, but I don't want to hold you guys up if you guys want to have other things to do, you know, because it's you know. I think that um a conversation that needs to be had is um the whole unprotected sex thing. Like okay. when did it become cool for people to start having unprotected sex? Like like that's disturbing. Tomorrow. How about tomorrow? How about I set it up tomorrow and we'll just talk about it? Okay. Sounds good. Same time? Yep. What time Sounds is good, good for you? 9, 9, 9, 9 a.m., 10, 11, 12 p.m. your time? 9 a.m. my time? Is that guys? Is that good for both of y'all? It's fine. Okay, I'll what, set it up. Leon, Leon, where you stay at? I live in Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, I stay in New York. Oh, yeah, me and each other. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll set it JP, up. JP, she stays in Texas. You, you, I'm gonna get that nigga, JP, man. I'm gonna get him in a good way. Oh, that's all good. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, I've had a, a real great time. If anybody's watching, uh, please give me a thumbs up and always subscribe to my brother. What the hell up seven and Neon Eyes? Even though she doesn't promote herself, she's a good person, and we gonna get her to do some content. But you guys gotta subscribe to her. <laughs> but I'm not like somebody you know, like oh, do what Troll says. But if you do, make it great. Um. I'm going to end this now. I had a blast. I appreciate anybody who watched. It was fun. We'll do something tomorrow. I'm trying to do something every day this week. We'll still have some good time tomorrow. Why? When did unprotected sex become popular? I'll, I'll, I'll make it sound better than that. But <laughs> oh, all right now, people. I really appreciate you. Thank you all. Much love. And we will do it again tomorrow. Later. All right. All right. Laters.